Morning headquarters keeping you up to date through the mid-morning hours. No matter where you live, the Weather Channel has you covered. That's right. We will get you prepared for what's ahead from coast to coast. And it's literally a coast to coast weather maker that we're tracking. Started in the west where the snow has been piling up. These are some of the flakes falling in Soda Springs, California. Wow. You know, they did their annual snow survey or their, their monthly snow survey on Tuesday. And they measured 7.5 inches in the snowpack. And they just picked up another 10 and a half inches of snow. So there you go. Yeah. it can happen quick. It can happen quick. And we need it in the West because we're running a snow yes, deficit, especially. So yeah. this is good news. Yeah. yeah. Now that system, though, on the move, brought a little snow to the mountains near Las Vegas. Now we're seeing it move into New Mexico. So yeah, spreading it, and that's going to be the the big instigator here when it comes to what we find ourselves dealing with this weekend in parts of the eastern third. But again, all starts out here in the West. Yeah, not one but two. So one system coming through. Um, again, now it's in New Mexico, but now we've got another system coming in to the Pacific Northwest. And Greg, I mean, the second system that we're tracking is going to be a doozy uh, even bigger and stronger than the first one yeah. in a different location it's going to move along a different path but it's going to be much more impactful in its own right with a lot more wind a lot mm -hmm. more snow and rain and severe weather as well from west to east i mean yes. it's west west coast too right. there's already winter storm watches up for the sierra we're already getting ready for it and guess what i'm showing you here is the ensemble mean from the european center's uh surface pressure forecast. So it's an average of about 50 different runs. And when you average it out over that many options and you still come up with an intense area of low pressure like this, you know this is a beast. Mm -hmm. It is going to be strong winds on the snowy side. We could have blizzard conditions, squall lines, severe weather, all of it in play. Yeah. And it'll wow. probably be a quarter or a stripe of some really heavy snow, too. I mean, there'll be that sweet spot for snowfall, but just the wind blowing around the snow might take over as the biggest challenge. That's such a good point. And because it'll be a swath of very heavy snow, but likely maybe narrowly concentrated, again, it's too early to really know right. where it's going to be. And that's why we show other possible scenarios of the tracks, mm -hmm. because not only did I show you an average of a lot of them together, when you look at the spread, how one varies from the next, you still get different positions of that area of low pressure and likewise, therefore, different positions of where the heaviest snow is going to be. Yeah, I mean, you think of a track that would be west of Chicago, you're dealing with mostly rain at that point. East of Chicago, you might be in that sweet spot. Yes, 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 snow. yes. All right, well, yes. what about uh, severe? That's going to be another aspect along with the snow. Yes, so the snow here starts out, again, this is a swath based on a, a, a mean of the forecast. Again, there's wiggle room here. Mm -hmm. It's going to bobble and weave. As we go through the next few days, you're going to want to turn around. But when we talk about severe weather in the south, and that we'll talk about next time, I think, as well, because that's going to be a big player. But the amount, because this track is going across the Great Lakes, it's going to bring a lot of warm air into the northeast. Heavy rain and flooding are likely over areas that have a lot of snow on the ground from system number one and the beginning of system number two. We could get some snow in the beginning of this. When we end up this thing maturing over the Great Lakes, it could bring a lot of rain over that snowpack. Yeah, and even spots that don't have a snowpack, it's just going to be that much rainfall that, that we're talking rain. about. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be a blockbuster yeah. storm with all the hazards there. All right, stay tuned. We'll talk more about this here through the day as well. We also want to check in with the and storm system is uh, what many would be considered classic nor'easter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something uh, the threat of which should not be taken lightly. And there are a few things you need to know about these East Coast storms. It really just depends on exactly where the low tracks. Yeah. I mean, there's so many complicating factors. In the south, too, I mean, for us, it's going to depend on... A nice looking today, but that does begin to change. Yeah, moisture will be on the increase. By the way, you know, we had so many really nice sunrises and sunsets earlier in the week because of the high clouds ahead right. of that system. Same thing's going to happen mm -hmm. ahead of this. So just there, there's your sort of nice side to things. You'll get some pretty sunrises and sunsets before this comes in, but by the weekend, this is barreling in. Yeah, we got the disturbance out there. That's really going to kick our 
low at the surface that'll get going here. And again, this will be the one that has the wintry impacts farther to the north. In the southern areas, rain showers, thunderstorms, and again, some of the storms could be strong to even severe. Yes, so we do have this warm sector we're going to keep an eye on watching across southern Louisiana all the way through the Florida Panhandle. That's Friday. Saturday, we do bring in more of Florida and the peninsula. Uh, it's not an obvious big severe outbreak right. or anything, but there's a chance of severe storms. Absolutely. And of course, with some heavy downpours, we're going to have to watch for some flooding. That's a risk that we face here anywhere in the green from southeastern Texas into Georgia. We just south of that 20 corridor. Flash flooding, a, a real possibility from some of these thunderstorms. So we time it out for you starting tomorrow. There'll be rain on the move throughout the morning hours. You see it by about before lunchtime throughout Louisiana, New Orleans through the afternoon. Mobile, your ride home on Friday night. It's going to be a soaker. Panama City by evening. DC area was always peeled to the TV. Are we going to get school canceled or not? And oftentimes not, not. because it was always <laughs> Saturdays, though. We don't have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Exactly. That is true. Now, there's still some time for the forecast to change. What advice do you have for folks there in uh, Baltimore, the DC metro areas as, as they prepare for? It's just a matter of staying on top of things, getting the latest information for the forecast, and being able to plan your day and uh, your family's uh, activities around it. Yeah, solid advice there. I like that. The most routine, uh, impactful thing that we have to deal with here for so many. Yeah. Chris Strong, Warning Coordination Meteorologist with the National Weather Service in Baltimore, Washington. Thank you for joining us. And uh, yes, so we've got an area, and this has increased from yesterday, the concerns, because yesterday was a low chance. Now it's low to medium threat that we will have ice accretion of a tenth of an inch or more. And that medium threat, Asheville, Hickory, Boone, Whitfield, Roanoke, yeah. I mean, getting all the way close to that TC areas we were exactly. just talking about. Exactly, yeah. We're going to have to watch this very, very closely because yeah, you start getting into those kind of type of values, and really any values of ice can be dangerous, but you start getting into those values, quarter of an inch to half an inch, and you see some spotty locations dealing with that, that becomes uh, quite more problematic for travels, uh, for power issues as well. Uh, for walking, you know? Yeah. I mean, you want to be careful out there this weekend, especially Saturday for the first half of the day is when we'll have a lot of the cold air kind of locked in challenges. A trace to a quarter of an inch is what we're talking about means hazardous travel, walking, and spotty power outages. So as we time it out Friday night into Saturday, and here comes the moisture. Notice it's early Saturday morning, and then the transition back over to rain. So it's a small window, but that window could add up. Uh, where we're going to be watching this uh, area of low pressure along the coast. And as that happens, there's going to be a fine line between who gets it and who does mm -hmm. not. All right. So, uh, this is one track of the low. Again, not set in stone just yet. Want to make sure, keep reminding you that things will change as the low itself forms. <laughs> but we're watching this as we get into overnight Saturday into Sunday morning. That's when a lot of the snow is going to be falling. Yeah, so in this scenario here, this is the European models forecast. The low is moving a little quicker. So for a spot like Boston, that's going to, as it's moving quicker, kind of keep our snow totals not necessarily low, but lower than what they could be if this thing hangs around a little longer which is kind of what the GFS does. Slower moving system as it moves its way towards the northeast. That's going to bring more snow in. I mean, we still have that rain snow line, so the position oh, yeah. will still matter. But of course, speed matters as well. And, you know, honestly, strength of the low matters too, because mm -hmm. if you get more kind of robust uh, air rising, that can create more robust snowfall. There you go. So there's the European models. Look at things. And yeah, East, eastern Massachusetts squarely here in that heavy uh, to close to very heavy range here when it comes to some of the snow uh, told us that we could mm -hmm. find the GFS model. It's a little snowy now. Remember yesterday it was the least snowy model. Now it's actually taken over as being the more snowy model, at least for Boston. At least for Boston, yes. All right, so that's one scenario that we are looking at. Let's focus in on New York City. Still waiting for our inch, of course. Uh, <laughs> look, there, there's a chance. But I wouldn't say there's a great chance, right? right. Is that kind of how you look at it? Great chance for to, to, to get that inch. Oh, you know? yes, yes. Yeah. There is a chance. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't bet. I'll say that that much. That, that's yeah. how close we are there in NYC in terms of uh, uh, where we are on that line. Best opportunities, northern Jersey sliding away mm -hmm. uh, to the north and west to get in some of the heavier snows. But again, both models have NYC right on that mm -hmm. edge. Yeah, and so, you know, it's not just about the snow falling. It's about the snow accumulating, too. Exactly. Which is going to exactly. be part of the challenge with our with our temperatures. All right, let's jump up to, to Portland. This is where there will be cold air. There is an Arctic high, but it's way up in southeastern Canada. And it kind of noses in here, so we don't deal with that rain still line. Exactly, it's just kind of peaking it's the, the yeah. cold, right? And again, just cold enough that keeps us mostly snow here. You can see from down East Maine, you got Portland in there as well and some of that heavier snow. The GFS mm -hmm. model, similar story as well. Maybe uh, seeing a few spots in southern portions of the Maine that could get into the heaviest as well. So overall, both models showing yeah. 
heavy snow for Sowing Pennsylvania. snow. I think the, the concern there is the, tr the track of the low. You know, how, how close is the pre shield really for you in Portland? Um, let's look at Baltimore and D.C., another one that's um, <laughs> but tricky. But I have to say, I yeah. mean, the, the trend here in both models has been less of a less of a chance of snow in town. Yeah, I was going to say this exact same thing. You start looking at the, how things have been moving from model to model run, and the, yeah, the trends are having that milder air mass in place. So we may miss the boat here in at least the bigger cities, Baltimore to D.C., Western yeah. Maryland, better chance to get in some of that snow. But, you know, even back towards Leesburg and Frederick, both models are trending less than they were right. a few days ago in terms of snowfall. You know, that said, things can still change. You Absolutely. Know? So, Absolutely. Um, keep an eye on this one. <laughs> Let's get into the out there. Let's look at some of the